This week on Christian World News, it's one of the strictest Muslim countries in the world, and it's also the place where Christianity is growing the fastest. Hear why former Muslims are risking their lives to publicly profess their faith in Jesus Christ. Plus, a catastrophic, catastrophic earthquake strikes Indonesia, but one plane manages to escape the carnage just moments before it hit. See why the pilot says it's simply because of a message he got from the Holy Spirit. And a radical man consumed with hate discovers he's the very thing he despises, launching him into a personal crisis that changes him forever. Hello everyone, welcome to this week's edition of uh, Christian World News. I'm George Thomas, my colleague Wendy Griffith is on assignment. Christianity is growing faster in Iran than in any other country in the world. Even though the population is overwhelmingly Muslim, tens of thousands are abandoning Islam. Not too long ago, I had the privilege of attending a mass baptism for a small group of believers. Take a look. On a recent Friday, 600 miles east of Tehran, not too far from the Afghanistan-Turkmenistan border, 20 Iranians prepared for a secret journey out of their country. For their safety, we've concealed their identities and changed their names. I've been waiting for this moment for nearly nine years. The mission took months to prepare. It was fraught with danger. This was my wish before I die. Afarin helped arrange their travel. The moment the Iranian government discovers someone has changed their religion, they will try everything to stop the person from sharing their new faith with others. Most of these new Christians paid a price for abandoning Islam. The government scares Christians, imprisons them, fires them from their jobs, kicks them out of school and many other tactics, all in an effort to stop them from evangelizing. Afarin knew what they were about to experience could land them in trouble. CBN News met them shortly after they left Iran. Due to the sensitive nature of this report, CBN News has agreed not to reveal our location nor the names of the individuals associated with the story. And this is why they left Iran for a few days. For the first time, all 20 followed Christ in baptism. Inside Iran, if the government found out that you were baptized, you would be automatic uh, imprisonment. And so rather than do that inside their country, they came outside for a special event like this. One by one, the young and old got dunked. Men, women and children, all of whom renounced Muhammad and professed their faith in Jesus Christ in a swimming pool rented for the occasion. 53-year-old Fari Bors waited 10 years for this moment. I accepted Christ when I was 43 years old. There was no way for me to get baptized in Iran because of the dangers we face. Today, my faith is complete. 16-year-old Sarah accepted Christ four years ago. I became a Christian after seeing Jesus in a dream. As I was getting baptized this morning, I felt the Holy Spirit come upon me in a new way. Entire families got baptized. It feels very good. I'm very happy. My whole family is happy. And what makes this baptism all the more significant is that the majority of Iranians in attendance have come from the nation's third largest city of Mashhad, which also happens to be one of Shia Islam's most holiest cities. Ilahi, once a devout Muslim, said the Quran left her with more questions than answers. This was the appointed time for me to get baptized. Also, I know God used the past 11 years to grow my faith so I could endure difficult times. Experts say her testimony and that of many others points to evidence that God is advancing his kingdom in Iran. We had never seen such an unprecedented growth of an underground church anywhere else before. Mike Ansari, an Iranian by birth, is director of operations at Mohabbat TV. In 2006, it became the first 24-hour Farsi Christian channel 
to beam gospel programs into Iran. The majority baptized this weekend came to faith by watching Mohabbat TV. Some of these believers wait, waited for many, many years to be baptized. They want to tell the world that they belong to Jesus. They want to tell the world that what was before is dead and now they're a new creation. Ansari says many Iranians, especially the young, feel disillusioned with Islam and record numbers are turning to this channel to learn more about Christianity. Roughly about 16 million Iranians uh, within the last uh, 12 months have viewed one or, one, uh, or more of our programs on, on satellite TV and also on their, uh, on their mobile devices. That roughly uh, translates to about 20% of Iran's population. Uh, and that is an overwhelming number. Mohabbat is now one of four satellite channels broadcasting continuous Christian programming into Iran. Since we didn't know other believers or were part of a house church, there was nobody to help us grow in our faith. We could only grow through watching Muhabbat TV and with the Holy Spirit's help to get stronger in our faith. Nathan Rastampour led a house church in Iran for 10 years until he was forced to flee because of religious persecution. Now he hosts a show on Muhabbat TV, teaching folks how to safely run a house church inside Iran. God is using this house church show to to sh not only share the gospel, but also to equip the house churches and make leaders. And those who track the growth of Christianity around the world say the one place where the faith is growing the most is in the Islamic Republic of Iran. Edward Hofsepian says this is nothing short of a miracle. His brother, Haik Hofsepian, an Assemblies of God pastor, was murdered in Iran for his faith in 1994. He says no matter how hard the government tries, it hasn't been able to stop the spread of Christianity. They are very scared of the Bible, and they realize many Iranians are attracted to Christianity. The government persecutes them, hoping to undo the effect. But the result is the opposite, as more come to faith. After a few days of fellowship, teaching, and encouragement, the 20 believers returned to Iran, energized and committed to sharing the love of Christ with their countrymen. Ansari says these exclusive images should encourage Christians that God is moving on the hearts of Iranians. There is a lot of good news that is coming out of Iran and we need to focus on that and celebrate that. We are hoping that the results that are being shared with the, with the church in the West would encourage the body of Christ in the Western world that uh, God is very much alive among Muslims and He's doing a great job. Continue to pray for the nation of Iran. Staying in the region, the Royal Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has been in the news this week because of the killing of Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Khashoggi was murdered shortly after entering the Saudi consulate in Istanbul, Turkey. Saudi Arabia says he died in a, quote, fistfight, but he was reportedly dismembered uh, by an assassination squad. Khashoggi was an outspoken critic of Saudi Arabia's oppressive policies. While political freedom is rare in the kingdom, religious freedom is practically non-existent. My colleague Emily Jones is here now. Emily, you recently spoke with a religious uh, expert about what life is like for Christians in Saudi Arabia. What did he say? That's right, George. David Curry of Open Doors says being a Christian could cost you your life. Recently on our World Beat program, I talked with him about the cost of following Christ in Saudi Arabia. David, can you paint the picture for us? What is life like for Christians and other non-Muslims in Saudi Arabia? Well, there's a great squeeze on Christians that exist within Saudi Arabia. They control all the means of government. You can't print Bibles there. You can't own a Bible if you're a Saudi citizen. It's very difficult even if you're not a Saudi citizen to attend church, to have a Bible. So there's a total control of religious expression in Saudi Arabia. They only see things one way. That's made it number 12 on our uh, research list of, of most difficult places for Christians, the World Watch List. And uh, we see uh, Saudi Arabia as a very problematic area and region, influencing much of the extremism of the Islamic faith over the last decade and beyond uh, through its funding of uh, madrasas that teach Wahhabism and how they uh, uh, passed that theology of hate funded it in Egypt, 
in Africa and elsewhere around the world. So Saudi Arabia is the central point in, in the spread of Wahhabism, which is, is formed Al Qaeda and everything else that has been part of this terroristic uh, trend over the last uh, several years. Well, David, how many Christians are there in Saudi Arabia? Do we even have official numbers? And how many have converted from Islam to Christianity? Well, nobody really knows how many Christians there are within Saudi Arabia because they're not allowed to express themselves publicly and go to church. We know that there are Christians there. We know that people want to have access to the Bible. There's, There are ways in which people can, can find a way around the system to uh, to experience in, in some kind of interaction with the gospel, whether that be through media forms, the internet, these kinds of things. But that is not because the Saudi government and culture has allowed it. They're fighting it with everything they can. So Saudi Arabia is a very difficult place for Christians. They're not, But again, not just within the borders of Saudi Arabia, but the things that they're funding. That puts in great relief uh, the the conditions we've had as an ally of the United States. We've, we've been pushing them on religious freedoms. I think we need to go further clearly to see them improve religious expression within Saudi Arabia. Their neighbor, Bahrain, has began to open up and have a little more expression. I think that's a path that Saudi Arabia can follow. And hopefully that will be part of the discussion now as they're going through this tumultuous time in their political world. Yes, we know that it's very dangerous to be a Christian in Saudi Arabia. Um, but what about um, spreading the gospel? How difficult is it there? And what ways is the church spreading the gospel in Saudi Arabia? Well, in many parts of the Muslim world, as is the case in Saudi Arabia, you have an underground church where believers are sharing person to person and Bibles are being passed on in secret. And there are organizations and, and, and ways in which we're trying to encourage the, the freedom of people to read a Bible and decide for themselves what they believe in Saudi Arabia and in other places around the world. That's the key thing. Well, I think what people forget to understand is most people don't have the freedom that we do here in the United States. That would certainly be the case in Saudi Arabia. If you own a Bible, you could be killed. You could be ostracized from your family. You could be totally cut off. The Saudi government has created a system that squeezes the life out of the church. That's their plan anyway. But churches do work underground in secret ways. An underground church exists throughout the Middle East. It would be true in Saudi Arabia as well. We definitely need to pray for the church in Saudi Arabia. Well, our World Beat show gives viewers the opportunity not only to learn about different countries, but how to pray for them as well. A very important part of that show. You can see Emily and myself on World Beat every Thursday on CBN News Watch or catch it on our CBN News Facebook page. Great to have you here, Emily. Okay, coming up, the miraculous fight, flight rather, that almost didn't happen. Now, how the Holy Spirit saved an entire plane from a deadly earthquake. God Almighty is a God of blessing. He always wants to bless His people. But how do you get that blessing? And what principles will unlock that secret? In Miraculous Blessings, Pat Robertson shows you how to open the floodgates of God's awesome blessings in your life. In order to have a blessing, you've got to be blessable. Discover what the Bible has to say about God's covenant of blessing, the laws of blessing, and what are the hindrances to the blessings of God. The words of Jesus, they are as valid as the law of gravity, and if we follow those laws, we will be blessed you'll see amazing true stories of everyday people whose lives were rescued and transformed by God's miraculous blessings. But even the doctors acknowledge that this had to be a miracle. Call 1-800-700-7000 or visit CBN.com to become a CBN partner and get miraculous blessings today. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. My husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. 
And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. Welcome back to Christian World News. The Jesus Film Project has reached another milestone. The well-known film has now been translated, has translated its 1700th language. The newest translation is in the Chica Italo language for people living in the Solomon Islands in the South Pacific. The ministry is planning to add several dozen more translations by 2025, helping them see and hear the story of Jesus in a language they can understand. When a powerful earthquake struck Indonesia last month, one plane managed to miraculously take off just before it hit. The Indonesian pilot says his relationship with God helped him hear divine instructions that saved him and 148 passengers. Lucille Talusan brings us this incredible testimony. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are. Commercial pilot Rico Seta Mafela, a devout Christian, hums worship songs during his flights. But moments before the earthquake and tsunami hit Indonesia last month, he felt the urge to sing aloud. Because of who you are. God seems like saying, hey, just praise me and worship me. Captain Mafela said he saw nothing unusual as he approached Palu that day, other than strong winds that prompted a split decision to circle before landing. That delayed him landing by nine minutes. As passengers departed and Mafela prepared for his next flight, he heard the voice again. Get out of this place. I mean, yeah, depart early. Captain Mafela wondered if it was just his imagination or something else. Regardless, he obeyed what he had heard and took off three minutes earlier than the scheduled departure time. That decision literally saved him and his 148 passengers. The quake start on the Dongala area, 17.55, 5.55 p.m. I push back at 5.52. The wave of the earthquake reached Palu, 7.4, 7.7. It's just exactly after my lift of pa. Yes. Those three minutes were crucial. After Captain Mafela's plane was safely airborne, this control tower started to cave in because of the strong earthquake, forcing air traffic controller Antonius Agung to jump from the fourth floor. He was a hero. Unfortunately, he died due to internal injuries. At the time, Captain Mafela and his passengers had no idea what was taking place below them. Later, Mafela realized his cell phone camera had captured a view of waves starting to form into tsunamis that struck central Sulawesi. Those uh, runway cracked behind me, and the deep is around uh, one and a half to two meters. Behind the runway, that's where the liquefactions only happen on my departure time. Captain Mafela is glad he listened and obeyed. Oh God, thank you so much. God reveals everything. If you are late even just one or two seconds, it could be a disaster. I don't need to prove that God is alive. I don't need to prove that God is here. I've seen it. It's more than enough for me. Lucille Talusan, CBN News, Palu, Indonesia. Thank you, Lucille. Coming up, what do you do when you discover you are the very thing you hate? One man's identity crisis becomes a path to faith and freedom. Parents, the Superbook Bible app is a great way to get your child reading the Bible because in today's busy world, we can use some help. The free Superbook Bible app has fun stuff your kids will love. They'll have a blast learning the Bible, playing great games, watching cool videos, discovering heroes in the Bible. They'll have fun while they learn God's Word. The Superbook Kids Bible app, available now. Life. It's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it. 
I came to give you life. Life to the fullest. Life in your family. Life in your finances. Life in your body, mind, and spirit. Life in your every day. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. We had four jobs that didn't go right. But, you know, we didn't waver in our faith. That's when God put on my heart that we needed to do the well. Within a couple of days, we got an insurance refund check that we had no idea was coming. And here we are, you know, this year, it's just boom. (laughs) You go out and help other people and you get rewarded for it. Get Pat Robertson's latest teaching, Miraculous Blessings. Imagine one day out of the blue, you find out that you're not the person you thought you were. And in fact, that you're the very thing you hate. That's exactly what happened to one political radical in Hungary. Dale Hood has a story of this man's crisis and his amazing transformation. He was once a rising star in one of Hungary's largest and most controversial political parties, Jobbik. Jobbik has been labeled fascist and anti-Semitic. Shanad Segedi, still in his 20s, was on a trajectory to lead this party someday. I joined Yobik in 2003 when the party foundations were being built. I was a member for nine years. I was vice president for six years and in the European Parliament since 2009. Segedi has also been branded an anti-Semite, although in our interview he disagreed. When I entered Yobik, I was kind of indifferent toward Jews. I didn't care about Jews. I didn't care about the Holocaust. I didn't consider the Holocaust as a tragedy for the Hungarian people. I read a lot of anti-Semitic literature. Still, Segedi was a leader of a party almost universally labeled anti-Semitic. And his public statement showed that at the very least, he still didn't like Jews and was suspicious of them. But that would all change when Chinad Segedi would learn something about himself that turned his world upside down. Chinad Segedi was a Jew. Rumors had begun swirling on the internet that Segedi had Jewish roots. So he went to talk with his 94-year-old grandmother, who had never said she was Jewish. And she opened up and she talked about her life and how she was sent to Auschwitz and how our whole family was annihilated. How did this change your view of the Holocaust? I was shocked, first of all, because I realized the Holocaust really happened. Not sure what he should do next, he first tried to hide his Jewishness and act like nothing had happened, but eventually realized he could not stay in Yobik. I realized I can't take part in any organization that has anything to do with anti-Semitism. So what do you do when you discover that you are one of the very things that you hated? For Chinat Segedi, you change. Segedi contacted local rabbi Shlomo Koves, who first thought it was a joke. When uh, we met first with Chanad, I had a very mixed feelings because from one hand, I was sitting uh, across somebody that is, uh, was seen for years as one of the main figures of the Yobbik party. From the other hand, I was sitting across a person, a broken person who has realized what he has done and who has become um, to, to a situation where he f- figured he has to change, but he still doesn't know how to change. Shanad started attending synagogue and admits that at first some members treated him like a leper and would literally leave the synagogue when he walked in. But some befriended him and he started taking classes at the synagogue, learning Hebrew and the meaning of kosher and Shabbat. How much of your life has changed since you learned that you're a Jew? It's changed everything. It's like being reborn, and the changes in my life are still happening. I had had this value system until I was 30, and I had to admit that it was all wrong and had to find the will to change. 
One of the high points of his new life was traveling this year to Israel with his wife and visiting the Holocaust Museum and the Wailing Wall. When I landed in Israel, airport security asked me a lot of questions. And when the guard asked me, are you a Jew? Then for the first time in my life, I could say yes. What has it been like learning how to be Jewish? Just to feel like you're on the right way spiritually and you can get closer to God, it's a whole new feeling for me that I'm doing the right thing. My life has been full of incredible miracles, but I believe everyone who chooses the way of God sees miracles. Dale heard CBN News in Budapest, Hungary. When you give, smiles grow bigger. When you care, homes are happier. When you comfort, the hurt goes away. When we all come together to love, miracles happen. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. My husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. Hello? Is this thing on? Hey, kids, do you love games? And do you love discovering things? Yeah. Well, do you? Yeah. Then you're going to love this. It's the new free Superbook Kids Bible app. You can play games, watch videos, find answers to your questions, and a whole lot more. The new Superbook Kids Bible app. Free downloads available on iTunes and Google Play now. Finally this week, CBN's Orphans Promise is reshaping children's lives in South Sudan. Families have been torn apart by violence in that country. Orphans Promise is showing thousands of children the love of Christ by providing safe housing, education and nutrition. The children enter the program fearful, reserved and untrustworthy, untrusting rather, but the love of love and generosity of Orphans Promise caregivers helps them find peace and healing. Well, folks, that is it for this week's edition of Christian World News. Until next week, from all of us here, goodbye and God bless you.